Hi guys, it's Gakwa here and today we're going to be doing a comparison video between the Infinix Zero Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus. I've been using the S21 Plus for over a year now since last year January when this came out and this has been out for close to a month now, maybe a few weeks, give or take. And in this video, I'm going to compare both devices in terms of performance, display, anything you need to know about this. The Infinix Zero Ultra is actually going for 520 USD, which is equivalent to 5,700 Ghana CDs here in Ghana. While the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, as of now, you can actually pick one of these up on Amazon for about $500, which is equivalent to this. So today, we're going to be comparing both devices to know what you should expect if you decide to pick any of these devices in 2022. So let's get to the video. Let's start with the design. The Infinix Zero Ultra has a glass back and a glass front and a curved display on the front. While the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus on the other hand has a glass front and a glass back too and the front being a Gorilla Glass Victors but we can't say the same for the Infinix device. For the design, both devices look amazing. I like the simplistic look on the Infinix. The Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus also looks great. But I must say, after using this for over a year, I say the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus hasn't aged quite well. There's a lot I can say about this, but let me just tell you, it hasn't aged really well. And this probably doesn't have to do with the fact that I don't use cases on my device. So I can't wait to see how the Infinix handles itself in terms of aging, how the device is going to look after a year or so of usage. So when it comes to the design, I think both look great. I like how easy they both feel in the hand. None of them feel bulky or choky in the hand. They actually have curved sides, so all of them feel very comfortable in the hands. So when it comes to design and build, when it comes to the design, I'm going to give it to the Infinix Zero Ultra. Now to the display. The Infinix comes with an AMOLED 120Hz at 6.8 inches with a peak brightness of 900 nits and has a screen to body ratio of 90.5 which is really cool. The S21 on the other hand has a dynamic AMOLED 2X display, it's also a 120Hz display with HDR10 support and has a peak brightness of 1300 nits. They both are 1080p panels and have an in-display fingerprint sensor on the bottom part of the displays. But the fingerprint sensor on the S21 Plus is an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor which from my experience performs faster in comparison to the Infinix. And one thing you must notice is that for the displays, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus has a flat display whilst the Infinix Zero Ultra has a curved display on the front. The curve is not so drastic so it wasn't a problem during my usage. But if I have to compare both panels, I have to give it to the S21 Plus for having more advanced features packed into it. Ultrasonic fingerprint sensor supporting HDR10 has a peak brightness of 1300 compared to the 900 on the Infinix. But in terms of colors and how the content look on both, I have to say they both look really well. This is a comparison and if I have to choose one, I have to go for the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus's panel. For battery life, the S21 Plus has a 4800 mAh battery and fast charges at 25 watts, whilst the Infinix Zero Ultra comes with a 4500 mAh battery and fast charges at 180 watts, which is insane and fully charges in about 15 minutes. To be honest, the S21 Plus cannot be the Infinix in terms of the battery department, which is a really good plus for the Infinix. From my usage, I get more battery life from the Infinix 2 as well as standby time from the Infinix. I can go days without charging my Infinix device. I can't say the same for my Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus. So when it comes to the batteries, I have to give it to the Infinix Zero Ultra. The charging speed that comes with this is amazing and I could use it for days without actually charging it, which is really, really good. So for the battery life, charging speed, and in general, the battery usage, I'm going to give it to the Infinix Zero Ultra. Now to the performance. The Infinix Zero Ultra comes with Android 12 with the XOS 12 installed, the MediaTek Dimensity 920 chipset, which is a 6 nanometer chipset, and comes with a Mali G68 GPU. This also features the 256GB of storage and 8GB of RAM. The Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus currently runs Android 12 2 with One UI 3.1. My version is the Exynos version. This is a 5 nanometer chipset. It also has 256GB of RAM. The Dimensity chipset did very well in terms of daily usage, playing games, opening apps, apps running in the background when it comes to the RAM and all. But I have to say the usage on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus is a tad bit better in terms of daily usage, app opening, processing of data and all, especially when it comes to playing games and the day-to-day -day usage of the device. App open really fast, everything is actually battery smooth even after a year of usage. So in that department, 
I kind of have to give it to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus because almost everything on this is really nice in terms of Android 12, material use, implementation when it comes to the coloring. I can't say so much in that department when it comes to the Infinix. Yes, this has Android 12, but I couldn't really experience the material U on it. So in general, when it comes to performance, I have to give it to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus for holding its ground even after a year, even getting to two years of usage. It's still pretty fast and responsive, so it wins that department. Two. Now to the cameras. The Infinix comes with a massive 200 megapixel main sensor and also a 13 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. While the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus also comes with a 64 megapixel telephoto camera, a 12 megapixel main sensor and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Okay, so when it comes to the pictures, as you can see, the processing on the Samsung is actually real to life. We have bluer skies as compared to the warmer colors on the Infinix Zero Ultra. But for the plant here, you can see it looks like it looks better on the Zero Ultra. But on human shots, it was kind of tricky. Which one do you prefer? This is a front camera video test on both cameras. The Samsung on the left and the Infinix on the right. So, we're checking out the boat look in terms of skin tones, how do I also sound, colors and everything. Which one are you going to go for, the left or the right? The Samsung or the Infinix? Let me know what you think about this. Also, how does the sound, also how does the mic sound in the comment section down below. Let's okay, so this is a video test on both cameras. On the left we have the Samsung and on the right we have the Infinix. The Samsung is shooting at UHD 30 and the and the Infinix is also shooting at 4K 30 FPS. The Samsung has ultra steady even at 4K 30, whilst the Infinix doesn't really have ultra steady at 4K 30, but the footage doesn't seem jittery so much. Let's try and do a short jog and see what the stabilization is like. Okay, so this is where you see the ultra stabilization working on the Samsung. I'm jogging right now, but you can't actually see it jitter so much. And also when it comes to videos, the Samsung is able to shoot 8K. So we are just not going to compare both when it comes to the videos. I think it's safe to say the Samsung takes this one. You can see the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus has the upper hand when it comes to that also. But when it comes to the videos, this actually shoots 8K, like 8K. The maximum for this is 4K 30 FPS. And even with this, with 4K, you still get ultra steady. So that is also going to take the win when it comes to the video department. So in general, for the cameras, it looks like the Samsung is taking this one too. Okay, so now what extra features do these have? This is a flagship device from Infinix, which is impressive, like I said. This is also a flagship device from Samsung from a year ago. But when it comes to flagship devices, there are things that people might look out for. In terms of water resistance and dust proof, this has that. In terms of wireless charging, this also has that but this we can say the same for that we hope that very soon we're going to see those extra features with our infinix device this even has reverse wireless charging so i think in terms of extra features this also takes the win but in general i think infinix did an amazing job when it comes to the infinix zero ultra i have enjoyed my usage with this especially due to that charging speed i can literally charge my battery from zero to 100 in about 15 minutes i can't say the same for this and it lasts really well. The screen has been really good. I thought I might not like the curved display, but I haven't had any accidental touches and the like, so it has also done really well. But in general, I have to say the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus has been really amazing. Even after close to two years of having this, it has been a solid device and can still be compared to most devices in 2022. So let me know what you think about this comparison video in the comment section. Which one are you going to be going for? Let's have a nice conversation in the comment section below. Are you going for the Infinix or the S21 Plus? Thank you for spending time with me. And if you're new to this channel, of course, subscribe, come join the family, leave in the comment section any questions that you have about these devices as I'm always spending time with you. I'll see you in my next upload. Peace, I'm out.